Welcome back guys. Today we'll be continuing on where we left off yesterday and we'll be priming this crash bar that we did all that prep to. So first I'm going to prime it. The primer has to sit for an hour. I'm probably going to just make sure I do two coats of primer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that um, rust guard or the rust paint that we did on our wiper arms, the flat black, and just do that. I was thinking even though it's not necessary, I think it might just add a little flair to beneath it. Even though no one's ever going to see it, I just want to make sure that it's protected and it's going to look a little good. Because the primer we'll be using is just um, this color, so it's like your normal typical primer, it's not even dark primer. That means once you have the bumper skin off, you can see it and it's very, vi not vibrant, but it sticks out like a sore thumb. So we'll probably end up just putting a super light coat of our um, rust paint that we use to paint the wipers because I do have a little bit left. So I'm trying to figure out how we can lay the bumper bar out because laying it like this, you're gonna miss half of it. So I think I'm gonna lay it like upright and then paint one side and paint the other side and then flip it over, paint the other side. So let's get to priming this. There we go, the primer is now on the crash bar, it's just drying. I let it sit for about 15 minutes as um, said on the can itself, it says wait 15 minutes, dry to the touch. So I let it um, dry for 15 minutes, flip it over, do the other side. So now I'm just waiting for it to dry uh, so I can do the second coat on the front and then 15 minutes and second coat on the back. While we're doing that, I did this little thing, so the white foam on here was actually broken on this end so I took a piece of plastic and Gorilla glued it on and it works absolutely perfect so couldn't have done that any better and I was trying to clean this up like you see there's rust on it but it's not coming clean so I'll just put it on like this I can probably clean up that but that's probably it and then I got the front lip sitting in the Sun because it's that polyurethane it heats up and when it heats up it um, goes back into shape right now it's a little out of shape just because of transit but let it sit in the sun for a bit and it'll probably go back into shape. Next is these bolts here, so I just drained it, I put a piece of paper in a funnel and then I drained the liquid back into the bottle because you can use it over and over. And now I'm gonna put these on a piece of cardboard, just like pretty much screw them through and then we can prime them up and actually we're not priming them, just putting some of that black enamel paint. That's how you prep bolts for paint, you just put them through a piece of cardboard and go ch -ch -ch -ch. So I've got to spray these, I've also put the nuts on this wire here that you can hold and then just spray those too. But first the primer is all dry so it's now time to change that white to black on the bar so let's go do this. So we finally have the crash bar all painted now. It used about a can and a little bit extra off of the first can, but look at that. So now it's gotta dry for 24 hours before I'm gonna mount it just cause that's what it says. But it looks better, it looks much better than if it was just primed, even though you're not gonna see it very much, but I thought I might as well do it anyways. Also this stuff will protect over the rust converter and the primer, just add another layer of rust protection. Now that we have the crash bar painted, we're going to paint these. So it's just using the gloss um, rust check enamel paint because I have no more mats, so we might as well use gloss. And we're just going to spray this all and it should look like that. There we go. So we have all the hardware now painted with the black enamel. As I said, it's a glossy and not the matte, so you can see the difference of how shiny it is. And if you're doing an exterior piece that didn't go right by beside your cowl like my wipers do, 
I would definitely recommend the glossy over the matte. It just looks a lot better. And same with all these like little brackets. These are for holding the bumper together. They're all painted. Um, you can see they're a little rough. I didn't spend too much time cleaning them because you actually don't see any of this hardware. But I thought I might as well put some stuff on it just to protect it. So there we go. I brought the um, crash bar in because it's dry enough to handle now. It's been a couple hours. It's still like a little tacky but like it's not catching fingerprints or anything so it's good but here's a comparison view check out this so this is the old one I could literally bend it in with my foot and then there's the new solid one so it's very good that we have that now because this guy's falling apart also the previous owner welded these on I don't know what they're for maybe for like a splitter or something but that doesn't make sense because this is sticking out so it would have actually hit the splitter so I'm not sure what he did there but that's all bent up and like it has a wire going through it to hold on the foam where now the foam fits perfectly in because I put that little black piece on so that is much better than the old one. Since the lip was sitting in the sun all day it's now super malleable. It was before because it's made out of like polyurethane but now it's even more so I thought I might as well try to mount it on here. I'm just gonna use zip ties we just want to get a rough estimate of how it looks because right now it doesn't look like it's gonna fit but According to everything, it should fit, so we'll see right now. I'll just zip tie it here and all the little mounting holes um, where it's supposed to go. Got some bright yellow zip ties to put this one on because these aren't going to stay on. They're just for temporary mounting. So I know these go right here, and these are the mounting holes that haven't broken off yet. Like this guy's broken, this has no mounting hole anymore, and on the other side a piece is missing. So this bumper's a little bit of a mess. So there it is all zip tied up. As you can see, it fits actually not too bad once you actually bend it into shape. Some of the things I don't like about this one is there's a gap here, but that might actually be a good thing if you're driving it in the winter because then all the salt could go through instead of sitting on the lip like the old one. And then I have this in here. You guys are probably wondering why. This is actually holding are trying to bend back this. I think it's much, yeah, it's much better now. That's why I'm leaving it in there. Because this part right here was actually bent down. Not sure what happened with the previous owner, but that was bent down. So if you like leave it like this, it actually kind of just flexes it back. Now if we look down on the inside, mount, most of the mounting holes are messed up one way or another. So this one is broken on the top. This guy is actually fine right here. This one doesn't have a mounting hole. This is just a hole. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Someone must add a um, lip or something and pulled that off. As you can see, there's a bunch of self-tapping screws. I'm gonna probably remove those because right now they're not doing much at all. And then you got these two right here. And as you can see, it needs to be pressed down. Um, that's why I'm probably just gonna leave it like this for tonight and hopefully it kind of bends into shape. But this is all the gap that is um, open, like when the bumper's together, you won't be able to tell. I'll also put some self-tappers. I'll do a much more permanent installation of this than the other lip, because this is going to be on, on top of the splitter. Also another idea I have is maybe cutting off the bottom piece so it sits more flush with the splitter. That might be an actual good idea. And then actually I'm taking some like silicone or something and then silicone it from the back so you see how it's like flush. That would be actually a good idea. But as you can see, there is a gap. Um, this will be fixed and I'll probably actually maybe take a hair dryer and see if I can't um, persuade it a bit to flex a little bit more. And then over here we have the right mounting hole, but then we got two more self-tappers, so that's an issue. But this is how the other side's supposed to be. And then this guy's good, this guy's falling apart. Actually, this one's falling apart too, there's no piece here. So this, this, and this one are all damaged. Those are just to mount it onto the top so it's not such a big deal and you don't see them, but it just shows how bad this bumper really is. It might look alright to you guys, but it's not. <laughs> So I did end up using a hair dryer just to see if I could um, bend it a bit more. And if you can see, it's actually pretty smooth. The other one we had on before here, which was just like your eBay special, wasn't this smooth like right there. So this is actually pretty good. But this was actually the same price as the one on eBay. This is just made by a more reputable manufacturer. 
Um, with the hair dryer, I was able to decrease that a bit, so I'm probably just going to end up leaving that because we are going to be working on this tomorrow. We're going to be actually designing the arrow for this front end. Well, designing the splitter, that's all we'll be doing tomorrow. Also, we'll be fixing up the bottom of the bumper because this bumper is really bad. It's got a lot of like holes from where self-tapping screws were. So we will end up probably sanding those down just to smoothen them out and probably not do anything because this is fiberglass. It doesn't need to be primed. The water's not going to hurt it if it's not primed. Anyways, that is it for today. We got the new crash bar all ready to go. Just waiting for that to cure and got a bunch more stuff painted and ready to go back on Project Daily. Until tomorrow, peace out and stay humble. Oh,